Hi, this is Sobhan Bhartia and welcome to TFR Insights. Today we have with us our <laughs> uh, old friend Daniel Lal. You are Global Vice President of SAP's Product Marketing. Now, uh, let, let's, let, let's talk about SAP and the event, you know, uh, Sapphire Now was there last week. Uh, of course, we missed it because <laughs> it was online event, not a physical event. So tell us a bit about what about the some of the major highlights I, I want to know, uh, not the highlights from SAP's perspective, but from your perspective, what were the things that you were excited about? I look after a lot of the BTP products, which is our business technology platform. And that's the platform that's, that's comprised of data management, analytics, integration, extension, and uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning. And that's the platform on which all our, our applications are built. So that's the part of the business I look after. And we had some really, really exciting things that, uh, that I think your, your listeners will be interested in. So let's talk about database first. We're, we always remain excited about HANA. And the big news is that HANA turns 10, believe it or not. So in-memory databases supporting enterprise applications now 10 years old. And um, we are helping customers on, uh, on this version of the latest release of HANA on-premises. It interacts with the cloud version of HANA. So now customers can write applications for hybrid scenarios, having some of their data in the cloud, some of their data on-premises, and an application, uh, from an application perspective, that's invisible to the application. So this will help customers move very quickly from on-premises to the cloud or move at their leisure as well. So we're, we're just allowing that capability now to happen uh, as, we, as we move into the cloud world. And also uh, HANA Cloud is now on Azure and AWS, both of those, both of those hyperscaler platforms. And again, Swapnil, that's a very big differentiation for SAP, and we've talked about this before, that our services run on all of the hyperscaler clouds, whether that's Azure, AWS, GCP, or, or Alibaba. So, so that's HANA, pretty exciting. And uh, also we're up to over 32,000 customers, which is great for that product. So that's our... Our, our big database announcement at Sapphire. Uh, so you mentioned, you know, uh, that, you know, from data center to cloud, make it easier. I was kind of curious that if you look at the current crisis that we are going uh, through this pandemic, uh, a lot of, uh, not on companies, but there is a kind of debate going on that uh, it is going to redefine how we build our infrastructure, how we manage it, how we run it, how we maintain it. Uh, and cloud is kind of today, the, those companies who already had a cloud strategy in place, they were the ones who were able to react fast. So, so uh, first of all, what do you think the long-term impact will be there and what role will HANA be playing because you are enabling customers to move wherever they want to run their workloads. What's interesting is we have experienced exactly the same thing. Not only have customers talked about it, but they've utilized our services, they've used, utilized our products to actually do rapid response during COVID-19. Uh, one of the, the fun examples, I just think this is a great example, is an organization called uh, GenYouth, and that's a, an organization that services underprivileged children. So um, uh, lab lessons, math, uh, basketball, all kinds of things. And one of the problems that COVID-19 brought upon uh, the, the, across the U.S., is many underprivileged kids got two out of their three meals per day at school. And with all the schools closing down, now there was a problem with, uh, with school lunches. So um, what the schools did, what the school district did, is they lessened the number of places that were giving school lunches, but they made that information public. We then at SAP took that information, that public information, we put a map behind it and we integrated that with mapping technology and did a registration system for any underprivileged children to register uh, where they were. And then from geolocation, we would map them up or, or match them up with places that were serving food that day or that week. So 
Uh, we built an application called SAP for Kids is, is the name of the website. And uh, you can go there and you can search anywhere that you want and you can find school lunches, school breakfasts. And so that's a, and we built that in less than two weeks with a team of less than 10 people. So when you talk about how different is the cloud, that was all enabled through cloud uh, database, through integration and through extension capabilities, we were able to build that quickly. So we see that um, uh, in many, many, many instances. Uh, another example is Parkland Hospital, which is in Dallas. And they have a, a, a whole hospital system with uh, hundreds of beds and they had to optimize their beds for these COVID-19 patients across their hospital system. That's an application that didn't exist uh, three months ago. They took about uh, two to three weeks. They extended some SAP applications that they had. They now have a full planning and predictive capability uh, using our integration and our analytics capabilities in the cloud to be able to better plan for the needs that they had for COVID-19 patients. So those are just two examples. I, I can go on and on, but we see the cloud enabling rapid response. We see cloud being able to get to minimum viable product very, very quickly. Uh, in both of those cases, less than a couple of weeks and with very small teams to do it, less than 10 people on both of those teams. So a very exciting times. Um, uh, compared to back in the old days where you'd have to order a, have to order a machine, you'd have to provision the machine, you'd have to get it into your data center, you'd have to put it under security, get the right firewall protection. Now you just have to enable a service and you're off and running. So pretty, pretty fun stuff. So can you talk a bit about you know, uh, what work SAP is doing in the AI and ML space? So we're putting uh, AI and machine learning into all of our applications. And one of the things we're doing that we announced from a platform perspective is in our SAP Analytics Cloud, the ability to do planning and predictive using artificial intelligence and machine learning in that planning and predictive capability. So historically, SAP offered predictive capabilities for things like manufacturing build or for employee needs as you built out your manufacturing spec. But those were all separate applications. They were not part of the analytics offer. So you'd have to spin up another application to do that. Well, now with SAP Analytics Cloud and planning and predictive, that's all integrated like a dashboard or reporting system now for, uh, for planning and predictive. So um, a business user, someone who might be in FP&A for finance, let's say, or someone who's a buyer that, that has a product line buying that says, hey, what if I uh, am gonna sell uh, more blue widgets than red widgets by 20% next year? How does that impact what I need to manufacture? How does that impact my top line? How does that impact my bottom line? And, and what's the, the people I need to build the new, the new widgets based on this new model? And we can do that basically via drag and drop. And then using, again, these predictive models and the, the algorithms that have been out there actually in the market for a number of years, they, they go to work and help you figure out how to do that, all integrated in, in, in a drag and drop environment. So pretty exciting there. And that's one of the new things we announced again at Sapphire was this new planning and predictive for SAP Analytics Cloud. You mentioned earlier that, you know, uh, the business technology platform. Uh, to talk a bit about the platform that what role is it playing in kind of helping uh, enterprise developers leverage all these technologies because they should focus more on building application that add some value to their business, not maintaining and managing and plumbing and all those things that doesn't add any value to their business. Swap, Neil, that's music to my ears and I'll give you $20 after this interview because that's exactly what SAP is doing. SAP is building a, a business platform first. So we do all the managed services ourselves from the analytics service to the integration service to all our developer services to our database service. We do all the management of the systems so you don't have to do it. 
What the developer just needs to do is say, I need to build something for a business outcome. A good example of that is our integration service. We've delivered now over 1,450 prepackaged integrations, uh, integrations for different applications, whether that be S for HANA or our customer service application, our Ariba uh, uh, procurement system, our success factors, HR system. And they can take those integrations and apply them very, very quickly into the customer's own environment. And by the way, those are free. And that's kind of an open source way that we're differentiating. And every one of those not only gives you the uh, the APIs, which is the the door to door communication, but actually gives you the content needed to understand what 's going on in your your HR system so that you can line up what you 're building in your manufacturing build with the people that you need in your employee system so um, very much a, a business platform and same thing with extensions we provide pre prepackaged content for a number of workflow processes that we deliver through S for HANA and through C for HANA. And a customer can just take that prepackaged content, apply it if they want, and then modify it if they want. A good example of that is we have different invoicing systems that are done around the world. So uh, the, invoice, uh, the invoice information necessary for Venezuela is different than the invoice information necessary for, let's say, Chile or um, Argentina. Well, a, a developer who, who works against all of those countries can just quickly pull down the prepackaged content and then modify the, the workflow process to add what's needed tax-wise or different reporting pieces needed per country. So we get the, we, we get the business 90% of the way there with the prepackaged content, and then they just need to do the 10% to add to what is needed in that, in that invoicing case. Does that make sense to you, Swap Neil? Oh, it does. And actually, uh, the second part of this question, because since you mentioned these things, is that number one, as you mentioned, different countries, uh, depending on, you know, there are a lot of not only business practices, but different laws. They have to comply with those as well. At the same time, their their needs may be different. The developers' needs are different. So, uh, which also mean that the challenges that they face might be different than somewhere else. So, can you talk about some of the some of the typical uh, a pattern, the challenges that you see and how you kind of address them because here you are talking about you know a different kind of solution for this it's not like one size fit all so if you go back in the day what was so beautiful about sap when we delivered it on premises is the application was completely open you could open up the sap application and modify that with our language called abop well as we move to the cloud and multi-tenancy now we are delivering standard applications the way that you do the modifications is through the platform. So you buy whatever application you need, but then you buy one common platform, the business technology platform, to actually do the extension and the integration. And so that's what we've provided. And it's a very open environment. It uses um, uh, the Eclipse framework. Uh, it provides a lot of capabilities for data management across SAP applications, for UI and, and uh, user experience uh, across the applications, as well as a common workflow environment to pull down and open up and modify those workflows. Again, as you just said, you have different tax laws, you have different reporting laws for each country. You can take a standard workflow, open that up, change the workflow, whatever's necessary for a taxing body, apply that directly onto the live process. Now you've got the new taxing, bo uh, taxing body enabled across the world. So r really, really cool. And it's the platform that supplies that today. Uh, anything else that strikes out, you know, in that uh, the Safar announcements? Yeah, I think the only thing we didn't cover is we are, are making great strides in data warehousing as well. So we've uh, brought Data Warehousing Cloud and, and we're adding two things to Data Warehousing that we think are, are very different than where the market is today. The first is we're providing pre-packaged content 
to our, um, our data warehousing capability. So we know that customers who are in retail need to analyze different things than customers in financial services, than in consumer packaged goods. And we're going to provide prepackaged free content for each one of those industries and delivering in uh, retail first, followed on by a number of, of different industries uh, after that. Uh, the second thing that we're adding in Data Warehouse Cloud is historically it's been very hard for the business analyst to say, I want to have a, a, um, a report that gives me information from uh, this area of the business and that area of the business and this area of the business and that area of the business. They would then have to talk to the data warehousing person that would figure out what the data schema needs to be and what the query set needs to be to answer the different questions. For example, the buyer might say, I need to know um, my history over the last five years of selling red floral dresses in uh, Wuhan province in China, for example. Well, historically, that would have to be navigated by a um, uh, a, a data warehouse person that would go grab all that data and then that would write that query. Well, we're providing a natural language layer now, a business language layer, so that that thing that I just described will actually create the query for that buyer. So the data warehousing person doesn't have to be in the mix, that query that can be uh, now designed directly by the buyer. So natural business language to make it easier for regular people like you and me to get into the data warehousing game. So that's pretty exciting as well, Swap Neil. Awesome. Uh, Dan, thank you so much for sitting down here with me, even if <laughs> virtually online, not even in person, virtual, and, yeah. you know, and talk to me. But I look forward to talk to you again and hopefully in person. Thank you. I look forward to the day when we could shake hands and go face to face again, Swap Neil, because it's always great to talk to you and, and uh, 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 educate your listeners on what's going on with SAP. So thank you for giving us the opportunity today.